All right, let's draw the molecular orbital diagram for C2. That's two carbon atoms trying to overlap and mix to create a molecule. Carbon has four valence electrons, 2s2 and 2p2. One, and there's four electrons for each of them, so this species itself should have eight electrons total. This is the empty molecular orbital diagram for C2, and in fact it's the same for N2, B2, BE2, and Li2. I just named everything from nitrogen to the left in the second row of the periodic table. It's different for O2, F2, and Ne2 because those have more protons in its nucleus, and the sigma 2p is actually found lower in energy than the pi 2p. These two have switched places. But that's not what we're worrying about here. We're assessing whether or not C2 is a stable species, and we have eight electrons to deal with to fill this up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Have you noticed I'm going bottom up? and spreading them out before I double them up. That's the Aufbau principle and Hund's rule. Seven, eight. Oh, and I'm done. <laughs> That's eight electrons, eight valence electrons into my valence molecular orbitals. And here we are. So, first of all, this looks diamagnetic because all of my electrons are paired up. I don't have any lone pairs of elect or lone electrons that are unpaired. And lastly, I want to calculate the bonding order number of electrons in bonding orbitals, one, two, three, four, five, six, minus the number of electrons in antibonding orbitals, that's one, two, and then I divide that by two. Six minus two over two gives me a bond order of two, and that tells me that C2 should have a stable double bond holding it together. All right, that's pretty much it. That's the molecular orbital diagram for C2. It's been good to see you. Thanks for coming out.